Well, hello everyone, another day, another video. And this is a subject we've talked about before, the Pantheon. <laughs> and it's basically an Etruscan building in Rome. If you read Livy's early history of Rome, you start to see that, you start to wonder, was Rome actually an Etruscan city at one time? The fact is they had an Etruscan king called Tarquinus. And you think, well, well were they an Etruscan city or not? And on maps, they're not shown as an Etruscan city. The Etruscans are shown as a different people. Well, why then did the Romans ad adopt all the Etruscan traditions? You see, there's, we have a problem. Uh, many of the Roman gods are Etruscan gods. And what is this doing here when it's so similar to the Etruscan pyramids? This is basically an Etruscan pyramid in Rome. We'll show why in a moment. Um, just amazing. The triplicity of the earth, the, the, three, the three motif. In this, the, the three, the threefold recession. It's an octagonal dome. Here we have a chessboard down the bottom. Just amazing concrete that I would say the Romans themselves didn't know how to use. The Etruscans um, brought it from the east, and they used it. I think this is probably fifth century BC, rather than the time of Emperor Hadrian, because you know, as others have pointed out, nothing else in Rome looks like this. Uh, just absolutely incredible. You have six steps, and then more steps, and this is all built by the Romans, apparently. Um, uh, you have a, a Greek-style Roman uh, temple in front of it, and it says this was built by, you know, blah, blah, blah. And fact is, uh, they've made it like a cathedral with these two towers. Uh, what was built by this guy? What, were, what exactly was built by that guy? The whole thing? What was built by him? Marcus Agrippa, who? What was built by him? And as obviously it's a kind of sundial, uh, we don't know how it works. It goes around perhaps illuminating statues. Uh, I don't think anyone has bothered to look into it because it would take a lifetime. Most people like curiosity, they're not inquisitive. Marcus Agrippa, uh, the third, made it interesting. And this is why it's like a pyramid, um, it's like a hemisphere. Um, however, you need to have the other hemisphere because pyramids resemble uh, the world. So a pyramid is a mound, and mound in French, it just betrays straight away what it is through the word. It's a monde. It's a world. Le monde. And so it is a representation of Earth, like the pyramids. Everyone knows the Great Pyramid represents Earth. That's been discovered. You know, Newton thought it represented Earth. You know, see my Newton video. Um, he knew it represented the Earth. Um, because he knew what pyramids were, he worked it out from reading ancient history. Um, it looks like these people also knew what pyramids were because they were descended directly from the pyramid builders. They couldn't have worked it out independently. They had their own, they, they were long enough ago that they inherited the knowledge. So it's representing the, the size of the earth. That's why it's representing all the gods, because it's re representing the entire world. It's representing everything. And we see this, this sort of spher spherical... Um, thing in also in Etruscan ruins. So just incredible, a bit of a Tiwanaku motif as well, a bit of a clue there. This, these are the world builders. Um, and it was used as a Catholic shrine, a bit, a bit of Byzantine imagery there as well. Uh, the Byzantines had very interesting art style. You know, it's full of people having a, having a look. Just amazing. Okay, so that's what it looks like from below. And let's continue. So, well, look, here's the thing. Look, I, it's it's so similar to the tomb of Polsena. There's the sphere. Um, look, how was this hemisphere built? Um, it was apparently a sphere on top of pyramids, with pyramids on top of that, and towers and bells and all sorts of things. And you know, uh, the Etruscans were were amazing builders. Or did they the, the, did the Etruscans themselves inherit ruins which they rebuilt and fixed up? That's a possibility as well. The Italians are great builders. We don't we don't actually know. Just incredible. Clusium is probably not where it is. Um, they say this was in Clusium, but we don't know exactly where Clusium was. Uh, when they show the 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 there there are some recent stories saying oh the Domus Aurea um, is another thing. Um, the Domusoria, which was was Nero's uh, Wanda, which is basically another version of the Pantheon, uh, is is this. Now that's not true at all. 
Um, no, not at all. It's, it was probably yet another pantheon in Rome. And basically, Nero had a revolving, um, he had a revolving, uh, rotating banquet hall. And there was, basically, it was, it was a planetarium, okay? And he said, you know, when, when it was built, he said, oh, finally, I can live like a human being. So that was, that was immortalized, apparently, by Suetonius, the Roman author. Uh, we don't know where the Domisoria was. We don't know where Clusium was. And here's the problem. The, the concrete used. And this just gives it away. Where did Romans use concrete? I searched for where did Romans use concrete? And the first statement says, concrete was the Roman Empire's construction material of choice. Well, that's news to me. Secondly, and this is the justification, it was used in monuments such as the Pantheon in Rome, as well as in wharves, breakwaters, and other harbour structures. Oh, okay, so <laughs> underwater. Do you see what's happening here? It's used underwater. In other words, it was the previous civilization to Rome that was using it because everything's been, been buried by the rising sea levels, except in, the term, in terms of the Pantheon. So that's all they can come up with in this short statement. It was used everywhere, but it was used in the Pantheon and underwater. Okay, so that, that says what I need to know. Um, it's older than Rome, and the Romans... Is, uh, could have inherited the Pantheon if it's built that well, you know. Uh, Rome did, did go back, you know, centuries and centuries and centuries. Uh, why wasn't it mentioned before? Well, we've lost a lot of records from Rome, unfortunately. Um, it's also very rare that the Romans... The other thing is I was reading that the Romans wouldn't actually... They wouldn't actually uh, build a, a Pantheon. That, that wasn't their style. They would actually uh, dedicate... They would basically dedicate uh, temples to just particular gods. They wouldn't make a temple to all the gods. Maybe they just found this. You know, it, it, I know it's it's a long shot, but I think it's it's very possible they inherited it. It was always there, um, and I, I believe built by the Etruscans, so similar to the Etrurian tomb of Persena, and obviously representing the earth. It's a pyramid. It was Rome's pyramid, and they knew what pyramids were. This is just a short video to show that this is, you know, it's, it's pre-Roman. Um, the Romans forgot about pyramids. They forgot how to build this. Civilization changed. But this remains standing because it was built so well. And it was built by the pre-Romans, as seen, you know, in other videos in terms of the Piranesi pictures, the Piranesi excavations of early Rome. Uh, everything was under Rome. I'd love to go there one day, find out for myself, you know, have a look. Anyway, that's my video. I uh, hope you're all doing very well. I haven't made many videos lately, so it's uh, good to touch base again.